Hi, Tom Shaw here. We're in Alan Cooper's basement, and this is a great example of a dual tank system. So what that means is there's two tanks. You've got your solar tank here, and that feeds into the existing tank. You can see that this existing tank has a gas backup, and this solar tank actually has an electrical heating component, but this is not tied in right now. This is not active. So this tank is acting as a solar tank only, and this tank is your gas backup heater, so you're never going to be without hot water. So, what happens is you have your water getting heated in this tank, and when this system is working together, the water comes out of the hot line here and actually feeds into the cold line on this tank. And so if the water is already up to temperature, then the gas burner doesn't turn on. If the water is not up to temperature, then whatever this thermostat is set at, it'll heat the water up to that amount. So instead of heating your groundwater from say 60 degrees to 120 degrees, let's say it's in the winter and this water is coming through at like 90 degrees, you're only heating from 90 to 120 as opposed to 60 to 120. So even if you're not getting your water all the way up to temperature with the solar, you're still getting a net benefit and the gas you're using is less. Allen has, you can see these ball valves up here, there's quite a few of them throughout the system. What this does is it allows Allen to isolate either the solar tank or the existing tank, the conventional tank, or use two systems together. He told us that just a few days ago, he completely bypassed this system altogether. So he closed off some of the ball valves running into this tank. So the water is just coming out of the solar tank and up into his house. So he's just on solar now. He turned the pilot off of his tank here and he's working just with solar energy. Now just to talk for a minute about how this tank works. You've got a pipe run coming right here and I can actually take the cover off of this control box so we can look at the guts of it. It's beautiful, isn't it? We've got our return line here, our supply line here, and our pressure gauge over here. So what's happening is you have a propylene glycol, this pinkish fluid right here, circulating up by this, via this pump, up to the panel on the roof, running through the collector, collecting all of that thermal energy, and then running back down through this line into the heat exchanger that's in the tank. So you can see, it comes in at the top right here, it's at about the middle of the tank, and it has coils that are wrapped around the tank that are transferring all of that heat that's gathered in the panel, uh, and then it comes back up here and goes back up to the collector. So this is a pretty standard configuration for a closed loop pressurized glycol uh, system. If you had a system that was called an open loop system, you just have water, potable water, traveling up to the collector, collecting the thermal energy, and running back into the tank. But that's not the case for this system. One other thing I'd like to mention is this guy right here. This is what's called an expansion tank. Now, anything that gains heat gains volume, right? So that volume that is gained as this propylene glycol gets up to, let's see, right now it's at about 140 degrees. It's gaining heat, it's gaining volume. It needs somewhere to go. So it fills up this expansion tank so that the system itself doesn't gain too much pressure. So that's why we need an expansion tank for this type of system.